Hello, my soccer universe. Well, one upset in the Conference League semifinals was completed. The other one was for a minute there, but overall, in the end, I think Fiorentina deserved to go through. They made just really, really hard work out of it. And whenever I talk about Fiorentina over the past few months, I'm saying the same thing. Finishing, finishing, finishing. is letting them down. This is what has me worried also for them in the Conference League final. As you can see, I still don't have an Olympiakos jersey. It is in the works, hopefully, and maybe by the by the final, <laughs> come the final, I will have one to at least complete a little bit more here in the background. But yeah, looks a little bit sparse already. Um, I was a little bit surprised that the uh, semi-final between Bruges and Fiorentina was actually played on Wednesday in the early evening. However, it actually worked beautifully for me in the end. But yeah, I should probably have uh, looked it up a little bit better. I was so fixated on the Thursday. But hey, this is how it actually should be. Have a semifinal. I mean, we have uh, a total of six semifinals. You can stretch them over three days. I definitely would have done, done that. And you could have watched every single one of them. Not have three in parallel yesterday evening. Um, I would say let's talk Bruges Fiorentina first. Because that was definitely the more interesting game. Bruges were up for it. The stadium was rocking. It was a really, really good atmosphere, I gotta say. And Bruges came out. I mean, uh, early, early exchange was relative, but Bruges came, uh, came out and tried to put Fiorentina a little bit on back foot and took in the 20th minute even the lead through a uh, Hans van Aken cross that seemingly the Kuipers had touched. Or maybe not. Did he? Did he? No, the replays were very inconclusive. In the end, the goal was given to Van Aken. Again, showing that if you do a cross in, 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 into the box and do it well, you do it in such a way that it can fall back into the net. That's exactly what happened there. And Bruges had leveled the score and seemed like they might, with home uh, support, be able to uh, push on and probably move on into a final. It would be the first one in a long, 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 long time for them. But just a few minutes after the goal, goal Fiorentina already had a glorious chance to equalize when Beltran was sent uh, free on goal to Mignolet. It was a good save by me, Mignolet, although you probably could have taken the finish a little bit better. Uh, even on the rebound, there should have been a corner given for Fiorentina, which was not uh, in the end. Um, and then Fiorentina actually had a little bit more of the game. However, Thiago suddenly, Milenkovic falls over. Wants to have a foul, was never a foul. Thiago runs through it as ample of, of space. However, Martinez Quarta then, uh, oh no, it was Dodo, uh, then a defense very, very, very well because that could have been 2 0 for Bruges and a game where you actually had, had the feeling that Fiorentina very much in the game could have turned very much in Bruges' favor. I mean, 2 0 up would still be just a goal away from overtime, but I think this could have turned the game and Fiorentina might have collapsed because they have shown this propensity to do so in Serie A as well. However, Fiorentina fought themselves back into the game. And I would say for the latter half of the first half and until the end of the game almost, they were by far the better team creating chances. Bruges were very much on the back foot. I really didn't see much com coming from them for most of the time. And then Fiorentina uh, did the best copy of PSG. I mean, that was a great shot um, coming from um, Kouame that hit the underside of the crossbar and went and right on the line or slightly before the line and out. You know, a classic Wembley. Uh, <laughs> it was not a Wembley goal, but a Wembley shot, if you would like. Uh, that really must have felt awful, but there were a few chances of Fiorentina before that. Second half, more of that. Uh, especially uh, Bruges were giving away free kicks on very dangerous air areas, and Pirag is a really good free kick taker. I mean, the first one he took, that went way above, but then the second one hits right on top of the crossbar in the corner of the goal. So another one. And then a little bit later, Kouame with a, a, F, a wide range effort again hits the post. So I really had the feeling there that Fiorentina tries to as it might they may never score a goal. Then it comes from a penalty where was it Kouame that had the head a little bit f uh, far down and then the foot was high? It was one of those where I think it was a little bit in a gray zone. But yeah, if it hits up there, it's probably most of the time given as a penalty, uh, whether you like, like it or not. And it is Beltran who steps up and converts and more or less sends Fiorentina through. So the thought, because very early on Hans van Aken had a really good chance 
uh, to uh, level the scores on ag ag aggregate as well. But this time Terracciano with a really good save. Fiorentina through to the final, the second uh, consecutive uh, Europa Conference League final. Last time they lost to West Ham, still a little bit bitter about that, mostly because of how the West Ham fans misbehaved. Uh, they are not because of West Ham themselves. But maybe this time will will be the charm. And maybe this time they really have actually a much better chance because they will be favorites meeting an Olympiakos side that just is doing almost the impossible. Uh, from the comeback against Tel Aviv, where they lost the home leg 4-1, only to advance from that one, uh, to um, ousting Fenerbahce on penalties, although they almost threw that away. And now they did Aston Villa. Um, to be fair, Aston Villa is a tired team and there is not much more left in the tank for, for them. However, they most likely will qualify for the Champions League, so they have achieved their season's goal. Um, but this time Olympiacos and again, great coaching. Mendy Libar again, leading a team into the final against all the odds uh, like he did last year with Sevilla. And you know, maybe he will become such a coach. Uh, it's really amazing. And he took over mid, 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 mid season. So a really amazing job by Mendy Libar there. But uh, it was really, Olympiacos had to keep it tight and hit on the uh, on the count on the first counter attack chance. Uh, El Kabi again, him who had already scored a hat trick, converts in the tenth minute, and you always had the feeling with all the possession. I mean, it was at times 80 percent that Villa had. They could not break down Olympiacos. It was only wide range shots, and yes, there was one uh, or the other in there by Bailey that got deflected. Then uh, Zolakis, and I remember still the name now after messing it up in the quarterfinals, had a good save uh, there. But there was nothing really super threatening coming from Villa. And in the second half, it got even worse that I thought that Olympiacos probably had even more of the game. That does not look, that did not look, look good. And you definitely have to ask major questions why the Premier League teams come the quarterfinals uh, and the semifinals, when there was only one semifinals, let up so much. I have a theory there that, you know, it is really, really tight. Those teams have to go game after game after game to reach Champions League, to fight for the title and so on. And then Europe becomes an afterthought. I mean, to be honest, Villa should probably have already been eliminated by Lille. Now they got eliminated by Olympiacos in rather embarrassing fashion. I've forgotten that al after Zolakis uh, kick kick out. Uh, seemingly was offside. No, he was not. And then runs more or less free on goal and converts and makes it 2-0. So he scores five against Villa. I guess a big name club will come in for him sooner or later. Although, have you heard of El Kabi before? Yeah, he's really the revelation of the, of the season. So uh, Olympiacos wins it 2-0 and are through to the final at home. And for me, this is the most misreported story there. Because whenever I, say, uh, whenever I hear, yeah, Olympiacos, they can play a final at home, it's just up the road in Athens and everyone will be, no. Ike and Olympiacos really don't like each other. If you know anything about Greek football, the top four in Greek football, they're at war of it, uh, each, in, with each other constantly. There are real uh, fears that Olympiacos fans will go to the Ike Stadium, completely thrash it, absolutely destroy that stadium to show them. And if they would win the Conf Conference League, I mean, that's gonna be war right there. I don't see anything happy coming from that. It's almost a horror scenario. UEFA really have to think hard about this one because this has a lot of tension there. Add to it that Fiorentina fans are already the last final uh, with Western fans. Got a little bit of a scuffle here, 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 there in Prague. I don't expect much more here. It might be that even some of the Athens fan groups might partner up with Fiorentina. I don't know if that will happen and cause some trouble against Olympiacos. I, I think this is all in the cards. This file could be a major headache. It's also a very interesting file because Olympiacos is only the second Greek team ever to reach a final. I think the first one was uh, Panathinaikos in 71. 
losing against Ajax in, at, at Wembley in the European Cup. So second ever Greek team in a final. In that sense, I think this works really well because uh, the Conference League was made that the smaller nations, uh, aka not the top five, although it should be said aka not the top four because uh, how many French teams have made the final as of late? Not too, too many. So it's really the top four. And in a European context, the, the Dutch are ahead of the French. Not on the money context, but in the European context, the Dutch are ahead of, of, of the French, reaching finals more readily. So yeah, that is what the Conference League was made for. That there is an Olympiakos in that final, that a team like that can actually get a trophy. And again, it sounds a little bit weird to say a team like that, a small team. Uh, in a European context, yes. In a Greek context, they're the giants, of course. And we'll talk about more about that when we talk about the preview of the final. Uh, you've seen it in, in, in the graphics. Fiorentina are and have to be considered favorites, even though they're playing away from home. But I would assume Fiorentina is overall the better team. The only thing that Fiorentina do not have is what uh, Olympiacos have. A strike and top form and Fiorentina likes to play offensively and I can very much see that El Cabi is doing Fiorentina like he did Aston Villa. Uh, it's definitely in there because uh, Olympiacos is a very capable team. It will be an interesting final. Fiorentina as I said overall if I look at the overall squad definitely the better team but this Olympiacos team is really dangerous and being the first Greek team to win a European Cup that would also mean a lot. So yeah, what did you think about the semifinals? Uh, how, how do you see the final coming? As I said, I will do a preview ahead of the final a few days before and we'll talk a little bit more about that. I think it will, I really think it will be an in, 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 interesting one. Even jersey-wise, I think Fiorentina will play in the third jersey, but we'll talk about that then as well. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more things and I'll talk to you soon, but more, more stuff in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.